a good nerve of Shabbos. In about 45 minutes or less, we light Shabbos candles. We bring in a portion of Vayera. Today at about 12.30 or 1 o'clock, I went to Brighton Square, the Brighton Common. We are, we, there was set up a Shabbos table for the 240 plus Jewish people who are hostages in Gaza. And there was this woman who was walking around. She had a little baby, maybe six months old, who was in her hand or in a baby beyond. And she was taking roses and she was putting it at every seat. And every time she came and she would read and she was, had tears in her eyes. But when she came to the high chairs and she put down the roses by the seats of these little babies, she just kept on breaking down and holding her baby. And I thought about the power of the Jewish people and this remarkable woman. She did this, must have gone on for at least 20 minutes while the event was going on. And I thought about it. You know, Hamas, the terrorists, the haters, they sacrifice their kids. They throw them in front of them. And here's a woman. She's in Boston. And she's 7,000 miles away from Israel. And yet... She's sobbing as she's putting a rose by each, each place and she's thinking about each of these people that are trapped in the tunnels of Gaza. What an angel. Someone who cares. Someone who loves. Someone who chooses life. Someone who chooses to celebrate people and love and not hate. And I keep on thinking about all the angels all over Israel over this last month and the world over. People that have turned into superheroes. People that have gone on missions and have brought things to to, to Chayalim and people that have that have made barbecues. We sponsored a barbecue this week for a hundred Chayalim on the border of Lebanon and, and tens of shoals, hundreds of shoals are doing that. And they're bringing washing machines and dryers right in front of Gaza so people could be able to, the soldiers who are there for three weeks should be able to have fresh clothing. And, they're, and, and you go on and on and you think about all these remarkable people. And it reminded me of something in this week's Torah portion, because in this week's Torah portion we read about Abraham. God tells him to have a circumcision, and he's recovering, and God comes to visit him. Now, what happened was, God took the sun and made it extra hot that day, because Abraham was looking for guests. He always liked to help people. But yet, God didn't want to bother him, because he was in pain. He was recovering from his circumcision. But then God realizes how upset Abraham is that he has nobody to help. So God brings three angels, and the three angels come, and he <laughs> makes the most delicious meal. Tongue, and, and, and all these delicious foods, and bread, and then it says, They sat under the tree, and Abraham stood above them, and watched them, and served them. And the rabbi asked a very simple question, you know, you think about it, when you go into a restaurant, you have a waiter, and every once in a while, the waiter comes back and checks what you need. But the rest of the time, the waiter stays away from you. You wouldn't be comfortable if you were eating and the waiter was standing over you the whole time, right? You want to have your privacy. So why did Abraham stand up above the angels by the tree when they were eating? Leave them alone. What does it mean? But who made the lamb? He stood above them. And the rabbi says something very beautiful. There's a Hasidic interpretation that says, that once Abraham went to help the angels, and once he went to do something kind for them, and generosity, he stood above them. He towered above them. You see, angels are angelic, and they do God's will, but they can never stand to the light of a human being who does kindness, who does love, who does chesed, who cares for others. And the moment Abraham went to serve them and nurture them and take care of them, who all made on them? He was standing above them. It doesn't mean literally that he stood there and he watched them. It means that his status and his stature of where he was through the chesed he did was even greater than the angels. And it made me think about each and every one of these angels. Every single person is contributing in their own way. If it's money, if it's going to a rally, if it's on social media, if it's going on a trip to Israel, if it's sending stuff. We have a guy in our show who sent, has a, we have a guy in our show who has a nephew who's on the front lines in Lebanon, and it's very hot there. And they like having these, it's called shlukerim in Hebrew, it's these, it's these like, almost like a bladder bag, 
where you have a straw, you wrap it around you and you drink from it and you keep the bag with the water in your backpack. So he wanted to send 20 of them to his, the, the gdud, the, the unit of his nephew, and he comes to the airport of El Al this week in, 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 on Tuesday night, and he's hoping he'll find someone who will take these 20 pieces for him, these drink canteen drinks that will go in their backpack and will help them. And he comes there, and there was no one ready to take it, no one was able to, he came a little late, and finally he sees these four guys, one of them was Nadav, and he asked Nadav, and Nadav says, you know what, I'll take it for you, but do me a favor, you check it in. So he checks it in, and then he comes back, and he starts following these guys, and the lady says, sir, you can't go there. And then Nadav smiles, and he says, don't worry, I'll take it. It's going to be with us in the cockpit. He was the pilot of the plane who was happy to help and do his part to help his brothers and sisters on the front line. And within 12 hours, someone picked it up and drove it to the north. And these soldiers on the front line had these things that they needed for their drinks. And I mean, every story is a world of its own. These angels, every single Jew who's risen to the occasion, is united. As we say, together we will be victorious, is an angel. And God is so proud of you. But I want to finish with one thing. You know, it's been four weeks already, and we all have broken hearts. But of course, we can't let our spirits be broken. And we also have to remember, this week's Torah portion, we read about the first child who's born a Jew, because Abraham wasn't born a Jew. And the first child who's born a Jew is Isaac. And what does his father and mother name him? Yitzchak, which means laughter. We need to be strong. We need to laugh. We need to celebrate. We need to have joy. We need to come together. We need to pray. We need to wrap tefillin. We need to light Shabbos candles. We need to do all these things because the only way to overcome these savages, these monsters, is through joy. And that's the story of the Jewish people. The first child is named Yitzchak because our joy is what allows us to overcome these terrible times we're in. And Bezrat Hashem, sooner than later, God will give us a blessing and we'll be reunited with these hostages and we'll bring peace to our land and we'll be able to truly celebrate even with the pain of knowing how many people we lost. We'll celebrate the unity and the love of the Jewish people. Shabbat Shalom. If you're here, come tomorrow to show. Join us for a prayer for Israel, for the soldiers, for the hostages and let's be together. Shabbat Shalom.